It's part four of our Marvin Siegel interview on the podcast, which is all about the world of marketing on television through TV shopping networks and infomercials. Are we on the air? I'm your host, Sean Wilsey, and for over 29 years, I've hosted shows on cable shopping networks generating hundreds of millions of dollars in sales. And now I want to be your guide into this world, explaining how it works, why it works, what doesn't work, and introduce you to the people who are making it the success that it is today. Before we continue with our interview with Marvin Siegel, because we have a lot still to chat about, maybe most importantly, what he's doing right now with the Y Networks and why many are looking at this as really the future of the industry. Near the end of our last show, we had Marvin had commented about how QVC doesn't run ads anymore. And you think of the irony of that, that someone whose sole job it is is to sell, to make money. Obviously, at the end of the day, they need to make money. They need customers. How do you get new, new customers? How does any store do it? You advertise. Target, Macy's. Uh, Dillard's, we're in the South here, we have Dillard's, uh, you know, all, all these major retailers still advertise. And Marvin brought up a very good point when he says they don't. So before we get back to chatting with Marvin, I just, I found a QVC commercial from 1992 that you would have seen running on television. And the visual part of this is just pictures of different types of products that are going fairly quickly, one after another, and then it'll speed up as the announcer's voice speeds up. To find all of these things, you could go to a hardware store, a pharmacy, a toy store, a jewelry store, a linen store, a houseware store, a sporting goods store, a department store, a stationery store, a lingerie store, a men's clothing store, a gift shop, a women's clothing store, a kid's clothing store, a client store, a lighting store, a stereo store, a bath shop, a perfume store, a TV store, a furniture store, a pet shop, a store, a pharmacy, a toy store, a jewelry store, a linen store, a houseware store, a sporting goods store, a department store, a stationery store, a lingerie store, a men's clothing store, a gift shop, a women's clothing store, a kid's clothing store, a 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 and the end graphic uh, there is QVC with the old QVC logo, the enjoyable way to shop from home 24 hours a day. It's kind of funny, though, in the... I found that on YouTube, as you can probably imagine. Uh, one of the first comments on, <laughs> under it is, uh, or you could just shop on Amazon. And that's true, too. If I grew up in New York City, I had Macy's, Bloomingdale's, Gimbel's to shop. Gimbel's went away. Macy's and Bloomingdale's, that's the same thing right now, basically. Um, yeah. So now we're at the point where we have HSN, we have QVC. And, and you know, I work for Shop LC, we have JTV, we have, we have others out there. But um, is there room for all these shopping now? I think they, they have their current audience. And I think no different than without picking on the shopping channel. So we neither one of us get in trouble. Okay, fair enough. Uh, okay. Sears was Amazon. Sears was the first direct-to-consumer company with the catalog. But what happened? They didn't pivot in time. Use that as an example great and apply point. it to anything else. Yeah, great point. Okay. Similar point is, and this is a documented story you can find online. There was an engineer at Eastman Kodak, that's the old, before it tried to become more relevant and was just Kodak. There was an engineer at Eastman Kodak that went up to the executive committee with a concept, not a cocktail, a prototype of a digital camera. The executive committee said that'll never work. And when <laughs> Come on. Eastman Kodak, bankrupt. Mm. There's another documentary. Again, this is answering your question, but without naming names. Yeah. Xerox at a very famous campus, they, their, their innovation campus is called Park. And actually on my social media, I quote one of the senior guys there with this, it's, it's on my social media. And I, and I love this quote, the best way to predict the future is to invent it, which is what we're doing right now, okay? Xerox felt copiers were not gonna be relevant anymore. And they wanted to make the copier relevant. So what did Xerox Park campus do? They invented what we now call GUI, the graphic user interface. Mm. They invented, and this is a documentary, you can find it. They didn't know what to do with it. They invited in two college kids to help them to figure out what to do with it. Who were the two college kids? Steve Jobs and Bill Gates. And they gave it away. Oh, I mean, so that answers your question without picking on any one of the shopping channels. Will they pivot? I don't know. But history says that large companies don't pivot really well. Amazon, okay? 
I love Amazon, but I challenge anybody listening to your podcast that do you actually shop on Amazon or do you go to Amazon and buy something and leave? I don't know anybody that shops around there. I mean, and I think that's a fundamental difference. They've tried. They actually hired an executive producer from a company I used to work at to run Style Code. Style Code, in my opinion, was a great concept. It was just not executed properly. So, I mean, Amazon obviously has billions of dollars they can throw at anything. It doesn't really matter. So will they get it right? Maybe they will. Will QVC get it right? Maybe they will. Um, time will tell. When I guess I think now that you said all that, because it did 100% true, um, when I watch Shark Tank, for instance, and one of the big pitches Lori Grenier will make is, I can get you on QVC, you know, and so, you know, and, and let, let me buy you. And it's, how important is that going to be down the road? Is the pitch, I can get you on QVC, going to be important, or is it going to be, I can get you on Y Network's going to be more important? I mean, what, 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 where's that going to happen? I, I think there will be a lot of different ways for people to shop. We're, we didn't even touch on the fact of the technology we're going to incorporate. And there Tell are me about that. Let's talk about that. So there's, there's a couple of companies that are really game-changing, in my opinion. Uh, one is called Clicktivated that I love. Clicktivated is what I spoke about previously, which is it maps a whole video. And while you're watching the video, I can click on the video and it will throw whatever I clicked on to a sidebar anything that I can get more information or buy. And the video keeps running. It's a revolutionary technology. That's technology number one. Another technology is called ad greets. And if you've never experienced ad greets, it is wild. Ad greets, it, think of a hyper personalized ad on Facebook. I'm going to give you an example. I'll pick on me, Sean. Okay. I click an ad in Facebook. And that millisecond that I click on the ad, the ad responds and says, hi, Marvin, your brother, Alan, and because I have a brother on Facebook, thought this would look great for you. So, I mean, it's like freaky. Now, some people will get, like, whoa, how does it know so much about me? The people you really want to hit with that will go, hey, this is really cool. And they will share that with other people. There's the magic. So it, it literally in that millisecond, it's not like you bought a Facebook ad campaign showing you and your you and your listeners, I'm sure know how that works, that I can I can target people based on what they've searched on Facebook in the past. This actually responds at a millisecond based on all the analytics that are sitting behind the scenes at Facebook. Really, really cool stuff. And there are technologies like that. And that we haven't even got into who we're merging with, uh, which is also game changing in, in my opinion. Uh, is that anything we can talk about, or do we have to leave that for the moment? No, absolutely. So we are merging with two other companies. Okay. Uh, it's called Deal Yard, uh, DealYard.com. Think of Deal Yard being a, uh, a more nimble version of Overstock.com, you know, kind of value-priced items. Um, and so we're merging, number one, with them. Number two, go back 10 or 15 years ago, Sean, um, you know, most manufacturers of small and major appliances, they had about eight to 10% in their budget for returns. And this makes you cringe when you think about it in today's world, that when a giant Samsung side-by-side -side refrigerator was returned, what did they do? It went to a landfill, which you go, oh, that's horrible. Well, there's now companies, one of them, which again, we're getting involved with called ReCommerce, which I love the name, number one. And they grade the products A, B, C, D. C and D products are not good to be resold. They use the parts to make an A and B unit perfect. How good are, they, how good are these people that you'd never even heard of before I said it to you? Last year, they reconditioned, refurbished, and resold over 1 million coffee makers. Wow. Right. But we're all coming together. Now, what's the difference in my model? And I'm going to make a very bold comparison. When you look at Procter & Gamble's website, Procter & Gamble has all these great brands, but they all compete with each other. My vision for this future is all these brands I just mentioned and more all complement and feed each other together. 
That's the difference. Wow. Um, like, what's going on right now with HSN and QVC? They're both like the same thing. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm trying to do something where it's really different. And then even within Deal Yard, we're going to have a very hip site called The Yard. And I want to have where we have a cool male, female, could be male, male, female, female, whatever. We're going to have a nice mix of people that are going to go around the country from very cool backyards, like an architectural digest type thing. And they will do the show from that backyard and feature about six new products each week. So it'll be a different location, a different background, a different site, you know, kind of like, um, you know, million dollar listings, but it'll be like million dollar backyards with products that are available for sale. And then something else going back to how did QVC get, get so big? We're going to have another category called once in a lifetime, which QVC used to have and doesn't, no one has anymore, except maybe gym shopping which does really crazy high-end stuff. Uh, but we're going to have a constant barrage of really one-of-a-kind, really unique products on Once in a Lifetime. But this will all be through this one portal of uh, deal, deal Yard. Is, is live still important, or is it all about on demand? I want to see something, and I want to see it now. Or, or is having something live as appointment viewing, let's just say, still important? Um. I produced a live show for Dr. Robbie Ludwig for about two and a half years out of Times Square uh, using Amiibo, which is right in front of me right now. And um, whenever you go live, it's it's got a, an element to it that things can go wrong. And every time Apple does an update, you know, has Mevo caught up with it, has Facebook caught up with it. And sometimes when you hit the live button, the thing looks at you and goes, I don't know what you want to do. So I have preferred to do live to tape with a little bit of editing like you do with your show and, but have it still as destination programming. Going back to what I said earlier, I want to have a 9 a.m. every Monday morning. Again, we have a cool couple, male, female, male, male, I don't really care, um, in the deal yard warehouse, breaking open the, the, the tractor trailer doors and saying, hey, look what just came in today. It's not even on the website. You got to put in this code and you can get this product now because you watch this and a discount on top of it. That's what I want to do. Um, but I want to do it on a Monday morning and that will be pre-recorded, but it will come off exactly at 9 a.m. every Monday morning. Now, maybe it becomes daily as things go on, which is exactly what QVC did. We'll see. This whole industry, TV shopping, has been such a female-dominated thing. Is there room for the male customer in all of this down the road? Well, it's funny you say that. So when we originally created the Y network, it was the Y chromosome. You know, it was like this is supposed to be more toward men. Oh, but course. the investors, the investors said, you're it's too narrow of a lane, you know, men don't buy as much as women do and women even buy for their man. So they asked us to change the name. Ironically, we kept the logo and we simply changed it to your network, which actually I like better because it's yours. It's whatever you want it to be. You mentioned Daniel Green earlier. Is that the Daniel Green I know? Old friend of mine. Yep. Great guy. Fantastic guy. So everybody needs to check that out. So what is the easiest for someone that wants to learn more about this? What's the easiest way for them to track you down, to track down your network, to track down anything that we're talking about here? How can they find you? Very simply for, for the Y networks, it's www.the the letter Y networks.com. And I encourage there's great music and it's all singers and songwriters. So it's stuff you have not heard. And I'm going to tell you, it's amazing. A lot of the videos have thousands of views already, and that's only been up for a short period of time. The interview with Ice-T from Law & Order is from a very cool guy called Premium Pete. Premium Pete does interviewers uh, interviews with rappers, uh, and they're phenomenal. Uh, Daniel Green is great. We have Bo Riles does travel videos. He's an infomercial guy, and he's got a great you know, travel a series of travel videos. So, and we're going to keep adding more content all the time. That's what's going to make our site so unique. And we will actually also have, you know, we may have, going back to the early days, we may have uh, where we do Survey Monkey and like tell us your favorite comedy movies. 
and let's say they'll name 10. We will license those 10 for a month and you'll be able to watch them uncut on the Y networks. So we're gonna do stuff like that. We're, we will really be an alternative channel. We're gonna have an app, <clears throat> which we're, we're already interviewing people to do the app for us right now. Uh, I'm very proud of where we're gonna be and this merger of these companies along with investments in some of the technology that I mentioned, I believe is really gonna make us unique in the marketplace and no one's going to have a collection of all that stuff. I think a couple of years from now, uh, we'll have another interview and it'll be that we were bought out by uh, Amazon, Alibaba, mm -hmm. maybe parent company, maybe federated stores because they're going to want to turnkey what we've done. I want everybody to go check it out. Like I said, I've known Marv for years, and, and I'm not just saying this because I, I know Marv and just think he's the greatest person in the world, but it really is great content, and it's a great place to go, and you really do want to check this out. So please go there and check it out. And I also just did I, – I got a, one, one more quick thing here is I have to thank Marv because he was the one that was, was responsible probably 10 years ago for introducing me to my childhood idol, Chuck Woolery. At Shop NBC, he was there as a guest for fly fishing. You got to tell that story quickly because your dad was a fisherman, right? No, it wasn't my dad. It was Keith Stewart. Keith Stewart. That's Keith right. Stewart, CEO of Shop NBC, who hired me. Right. I was the first. And I'll give you a quick story about that. But, um, but Chuck, Wool I brought Chuck Woolery there uh, with another vendor rep, and he, I mean, and Keith Stewart loved them because they were both avid fishermen. Uh, Keith Stewart owns a fishing lure company and Chuck Woolery is an avid fisherman and there was no funnier guy to go to dinner with than Chuck Woolery. Oh yeah. I mean, just absolutely, I mean, an amazing individual, fun on air. Um, and, uh, and that's, I, I really enjoyed my career because of people like that. I mean, uh, so going back to Keith Stewart for a second. So, um, I was doing what I was doing at QVC. My, uh, I, I, there was a Google announcement that Keith Stewart became CEO of what was then Shop NBC. I sent Keith an email. I had his personal email from QVC days. And I said, Keith, best of luck, Marv. That was it. I, I didn't, I swear, I didn't expect to hear anything else. Five minutes goes by. Keith sends me an email back. Really could use your help out here. Wow. Wait a I respond. I say, Keith, how do I do that without my father cutting me out of the will? Okay. <laughs> uh, and, and Keith responds again and he goes, I don't know. He goes, I'm buying you a first class plane ticket. Please fly out tomorrow. Oh my God. So I flew out tomorrow. He was very generous in his financial offer yeah. with stock. And, um, I then, before I accepted the offer, you're going you're gonna to love this. I called my daughter, not my father. I called my daughter. And I said, Devin, what do you think I should do? And Devin knew the story, you know, about being under the, the shadow of somebody like my father. And she said, take it because now you can prove yourself without your father's shadow being there. And it was her endorsement is why I took that. My father was a little pissed off for a period of time, yeah. but then... A bunch of other people, if you remember, started coming over from QVC yep. yes, they did. Uh, shop NBC. So he calmed down after that. I, I'm still working with some here down in Texas. Cindy, one of our executives uh, at Shop LC, was part of that that whole group. Marv, I can't thank yep. you enough for coming on. I've enjoyed every second of every episode we've done here. So thank you so much and best of luck, my friend. Thank you. And again, I love it's all about relationships and we've maintained this relationship and uh Anytime you need me for anything, you let me know. Thank you very much. Mar Marv Siegel, everybody. And I hope you'll be checking me out on social media. You can find me on Twitter at Sean Wilsey, my full name, S-H-A-W-N-W-I-L-S-I-E, and on Instagram at S Wilsey. Uh, we'll be next time starting fresh with a, an episode I'm calling What's News? And I think you'll find it very interesting. Get back into the infomercial discussion. Anyway, thank you for downloading this edition of Are We On The Air? This has been a King Bobby production. Yes, I know, Travis. That's why we give such bargains. <laughs>